Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking a look at Prescott Gateway Mall in Prescott, Arizona. I did a video on this mall almost three years ago and since then I've gotten a lot of emails and messages and comments on that old video telling me that I should come check this place out again because it's gotten much worse. It's always fun coming back to a place to film for a second time because you've noticed things you didn't notice the first time like these plaques here. And as the date on that plaque suggests, this mall opened on March 8th, 2002. They also thank various people on these plaques for helping this mall become a reality. This mall originally was a Westcore mall and they announced that they were going to build a mall in Prescott, Arizona back in 1998. But that was met with a lot of local opposition, there was lawsuits, referendums, and construction didn't actually begin until 2001. When I filmed this mall a few years ago, it was all decorated for Christmas, so it's kind of nice to see it in its normal form now. We'll take a quick look at the map here, and you can see the anchors are listed as Dillard's, JCPenney, and Sears. The Sears is no longer here, though. It closed back in February. In 2012, this mall was purchased by the Tabani Group for $16.3 million, and just a few years later when I was here filming, they were already trying to sell the place but weren't being successful at that. They were eventually able to sell this place though. A company called Kohan Retail Investment Groups purchased it in 2018 for $8.8 .8 million, so just about half of what the Tabani Group had paid for it. When I was here a few years ago, this place was doing pretty poorly, but it looks like it's doing worse now. It's interesting to see a mall that's less than 20 years old already failing. Right there is the vacant Sears spot. You'll notice a lot of vacancies throughout the video. Something else I've never seen before is there's an Avis budget uh, rental car office here. Looks like it's closed, but I think it was maybe just closed for the day. I don't know. I was here on a Saturday uh, about one in the afternoon, so that'd be kind of a weird time for them to be closed. Now this was a closed vape shop the last time I was here and it looks like it's a dead mall church now. Right across from the church you've got a Spencer Gifts. It's completely appropriate. <laughs> Something I really liked about this place the first time I was here and I'm noticing again is the ceilings. I love the wood panel ceilings here. Oh look, there's a hurricane simulator. There's another dead mall fixture. And a little bit further down we have a actually still open GameStop. It seemed to be one of the busier stores in this mall. That was a uh, sports apparel store, I believe, when I was here the last time, and it was still open, so it looks like they just recently shut down. Here's another big empty spot, and I don't know if you can just barely see that in there, but there's some Christmas trees in there. I'm not sure if those just got pulled out of storage or if those have been just kind of stored there since last Christmas. Here's a closer look at those trees. They look like they're in pretty sad shape. I love the ceilings because they look so classy, but then if we just kind of pan over this way, we can see what looks like basically a flea market. That That's not classy at all. That, that doesn't match this place. It's kind of gross looking. Now here's a shot of the food court entrance and something else I noticed the last time I was here was this big piece of land had a for lease sign on it, but it looks like they've taken that down so I guess they've just kind of given up on developing this part. Here's a look inside the food court and this was probably the busiest spot in the mall. This place seemed to be filled with a lot of mall walkers and then also people just getting like their senior discount cup of coffee here and kind of hanging out for a bit. It kind of started to clear out after about 2 p.m. But there's a few things left in here. Off to the right there is a big fireplace that was lit the last time I was here because it was Christmas time and it was really pretty. I also like the old photographs along the tops of the food court. Kind of showing you a little bit of the history of Prescott. And yes, I'm pronouncing it Prescott now. In the last video that I did, I pronounced it Prescott just because that's how we always pronounce it where I live. And uh, people were very angry with that pronunciation.
I love these ramp things. Like they've got stairs off to the side and then like a handicap access ramp. It's way easier just to walk up the ramp though. It's very dated looking, but I, I also like it. Now this is unfortunate. Nate's Arcade was gone. This was open the last time I was here. The company that now owns this place, Kohan Retail Investment Group, says that part of their strategy is to buy distressed malls like this one and then try and turn them around and they say they have about a 60% success rate at that. I'm, I'm not sure if they're being successful here though. I'm seeing a few new places like this uh, Blue Note store which is like a musical instrument store but then I'm also noticing a lot more vacancies and things that were open the last time I was here but are gone now. Besides the ceilings I really like those skylights all around the edges on the wall up there. Here's the uh, JCPenney, which is still currently open and I don't believe is on any closure list and it doesn't look like they were having any sort of liquidation sale. It seems like a lot of malls have the play place in front of the JCPenney. It's kind of interesting. Something else that's kind of interesting is to the left there, there's a place called Metro Barbershop. There was one of those in Metro Center Mall and I just always assumed the name was because it was in Metro Center Mall, but it looks like it's actually a chain. Now this is something else I've been seeing a lot lately at Dead Malls, are local model railroad clubs popping in in some of the vacant spots. Now this one's unfortunately closed right now, but I saw this sign here and notice if you, if you just put your palm up to this spot on the window, it'll activate the train there. So at least we can see a little bit of model train action. Kind of get a closer look at some of their setups in here as well. I was kind of bummed out this wasn't open. I, I actually really like poking around these places and a lot of times the guys that are working in here are like volunteers and they're always like old guys with really interesting stories. Yeah, it looks like I just missed it. I was here I believe the second Saturday of the month. So it was just a, it was open a week before I was here. But here's another look inside. You can kind of see some of their displays. I always forget how much I love model railroad stuff until I see it. Now something else that recently happened at this mall is the local utility company threatened to shut the power off because apparently the owners were way behind on the bill. They actually sent notices to all of the tenants here letting them know the power was going to be turned off. Now through reading news stories it looks like they were able to negotiate things and finally get it settled, but this isn't the only mall this owner has had trouble keeping the power bill paid at. It turns out they also own Chapel Hill Mall and right around the same time there was a problem with a delinquent utility bill there. Another kind of cool feature of this mall is it has an outdoor mall area that they call the village and there's this big tree in the middle and this looks really amazing during Christmas because they do it all up with lights and everything. And I also always thought it was kind of weird that there was a famous footwear here and then right next to it was a, a Payless shoe source. I'm pretty sure this location closed when they shut down all of their locations. Uh, it looks like they've had trouble getting anybody to move in though and I'm surprised to still see the sign up. But we can kind of take a peek in here through the window and even the shoe racks are still there. At other closed Payless locations I've looked at, everything's been taken and gone. I was also surprised to see this enchanted Christmas indoor village of lights. We took a look at this at the last video, and I don't know if this poster has just been there the whole time or if it's just because they're getting ready to set it up again. It's a little bit early for Christmas stuff, though. This wing that leads down to the Sears is probably the uh, deadest wing in the mall. And I think it illustrates really well what happens when an anchor goes dark. The whole rest of the corridor eventually goes dark. And that's unfortunate for this one because I don't know if you noticed that there to the right, but that's an old KB Toys location. So there was a KB Toys in this corridor and there was also, there still is a GameStop, but who knows how much longer that'll be there. And then there was also a Spencer Gifts. This is like the coolest part of the mall. It was until it died. I just don't know that Prescott has the population to support a mall like this. I don't think it's grown nearly as much as they thought it would since the early 2000s. It's funny because I think the tile in this mall is awful, but god I do love the ceilings. And here's a closer look at the Sears, and I love these, the Sears is closed, nope, no kidding. 
But I noticed there's like some inflatables in there and some looks like skateboard ramps. I wonder what was going on in here or what it was being used for. Looks like some sort of exhibition or something was going on in here recently. Here's a closer look at the Spencer and I love that Spencer too because walking into it feels like you're taking a trip back into the uh, late 90s. It's, it's very retro in there still. And then there's the KB. Now this place I'm glad to see is still here, this games people play. They also owned the Nate's Arcade next door, which unfortunately, like we saw earlier in the video, that's now closed. It was kind of an interesting arcade too, because I think it was just for overstock of arcade games that they had for sale, but they had some neat games in here. They had a couple of Neo Geo cabinets. There was an off-road cabinet, which I haven't seen in forever. It looks like they've still got a few stored in here. Here's a closer look inside the Games People Play store, and this is a fun store to look at. They sell like billiards tables, jukeboxes, uh, slot machines, arcade games. They've even got some old pinball machines. I, I love that jukebox in particular, but there's some wide body pinball machines back there that I wish I could play. Now here's an interesting dichotomy. You've got a Claire's and right next to it a tactical gear store? I've, I've never seen a tactical gear store in a mall before. Oh, and there's still a buckle here. I don't see a lot of these around anymore. It's kind of nice to see some of the OG stores still here. Notice a lot of these gumball machines around. I wonder how old the gumballs are in there. This seems like a weird spot for this High Flyers bungee thing kind of makes the mall look tacky at just being right there in the middle of the walkway. There had to have been a better place they could have put that. Don't the ceilings just look really grand in here? Now this is something else that wasn't here the last time I was here. This is a education center and memorial for the 19 Granite Mountain Hotshot firefighters that were killed back in 2013 while fighting the Yarnell Hellfire. I can't believe that all happened back in 2013. It feels like that was just recently all over the local news here. You gotta love when dead malls do this, when they just kinda stage empty stores, just kinda make things look less empty. I don't know that it really helps though. I think it makes it stick out more like a sore thumb. This corridor down towards the Dillards isn't very busy either and actually has a lot of vacancies as well. Looks like some of the mall plants aren't doing as well as they were the last time I was here. Seeing a lot more empty pots. I'm really glad that I visited this mall again almost three years later. I know that the current owners are really trying to make a go of rehabilitating this place and making it a successful mall again, but I, I think they've got a very long uphill struggle ahead of them. Prescott's a very nice area. Like I said, I just don't think it's big enough to support a mall like this. Not yet, anyways. What are your thoughts on Prescott Gateway Mall, though? Is this a mall that you remember going to? This mall is only 18 years old, so it's not even old enough to drink yet, and if you grew up going to this mall, you're probably not old enough to drink either. But anyways, I'd love to know any of your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out my update video on Prescott Gateway Mall in Prescott, Arizona. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.